We're Ben and Lucy Mason and we farm in partnership here at Merivale Farm. I'm Samantha Lambert, welcome to our farm. We farm in Gloucestershire. We farm here with myself and my husband Nick and our four-year-old daughter Sky. So I'm a Hugh um, here at Minimaston Dairy. Morning everyone, my name is Thomas Pemberton and I farm in the northwest of England. I'm Ellie Bevan from Winsby Dairy. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm from Vine Farm Dairy in Leicestershire, near Melton Mowbray. Um, I'm Jenny Bennett um, from Marchwood Farming. Hi, I'm Lorna, a dairy farmer from the beautiful county of Devon, where our crossbred dairy cows are out grazing for as long as possible during the year to produce high quality milk, which is ideal for the production of butter and cheese. Here in Somerset, we're proud to produce great tasting milk from our herd of organic Frisian Jersey crossbred cows. They are milked through a robotic milking system and they have free access. I'm third generation. I took on the farm from my grandfather on the 1st January 2020. We're dairy and beef and well, we do have a few sheep that are my other grandfathers that we have a large involvement in, but our main enterprise is the dairy. And we're milking 80 to 90 cows now, which is a massive increase from what I took it on with at about 45 cows at the time. So we're slowly moving it up in numbers and diversifying at the same time. Um, we have 180 uh, organic Holstein Frisian dairy cows. Um, and we've been here since, well, mum and dad took the farm over in 1981. It's definitely a concept that we've both got into in a big way. <clears throat> certainly believe in the, in the system. It was originally um, a, a management thing, wasn't it? Dad wanted a new challenge, I think, and then, um, you know, that's when organic was playing really, really well. So that had its um, its draws as well. Um, and then we just enjoyed the, the way of farming, didn't we? It was started 15 years ago with the A2s, Slellies, um, and got on with them very well. That's when I sort of started taking over management of the herd, really. Um, and then we upgraded to a threes um, five years ago now. 2017, then we put another building yeah. up. Uh, we milk 180 at present, and we have 140 followers um, from calves up into to heifers. So all our cows have got um, a little round ear tag in their ear, which is the um, auto ID for the parlour. Um, so it tells you which cows come in on the machines and how much to feed them. And then their collars are an amazing thing. They're there to do the activity, eating and rumination of the cow. Um, and so basically it, it keeps an eye on all their health problems and if they're not eating or anything like that. Um, and it, it is so good that it basically will see it and tell us way before we can see it by eye or anybody can. Um, so it is generally like having another person and the person just sat on the gate watching them when they're bullying and all the rest of it is an absolutely amazing system. We're a spring calving um, farm, um, quite new to milking really. Um, nine years we've been milking um, and then we started uh, with the milk friendly machine last year, first of January last year. So uh, yeah, um, been at it now for 18 months. My husband and I came here with a 10-year tenancy and then six years in the estate offered a 35-year tenancy to the age of my husband retired 65. So we thought we can invest now in something and then we went down the route of dairy um, and then quite quickly really in 12 months from the season when we were milking. Um, yeah, so it was quite full on. We are farming 240 acres, which half is owned and half is rented. We farm mainly dairy cows, which are behind me. We have 100, 120 milking on the farm with about 100 followers. And then on top of that, we have 100 beef cattle that we decided to start rearing and we finish on the farm on grass and we put through our farm shop. We opened our farm shop in 2017 because we're really keen about cutting out the middleman and uh, we like it born on the farm, bred on the farm and sold through our farm shop as most as we can. We have a few ewes that we sell our lamb through there and mainly we obviously sell our milk, cream, beef and lamb. We milk 300 cows here-ish at Winsbury. We recently changed up the breeding so we were Holstein Frisian 
um, and kind of focused on yield predominantly. We've kind of moved away from that now. We've put all tracks in and gone more outdoor based and pallet grazing and um, we changed up the breeding a bit. So we've got a bit of um, Norwegian red and um, some Jersey in there and different other things just for longevity and foot health a lot better. And yeah, we just find they have more lactations, hopefully, um, but less intensive. We farm here, we've got 350 cows in the herd um, and uh, the large majority of our um, milk goes to Long Clawson Dairy uh, to make Stilton cheese which can only be produced in Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Uh, so this is my partner James, uh, it's his family farm, um, him and his brother Richard farm, they're fourth generation farmers um, but it's a very big family affair and we're all sort of very heavily involved in it. We carve all year round um, here, so um, yeah, we normally have uh, a few new arrivals every day. <laughs> so we decided to at Vine Farm Dairy about four years ago. Um, we, we really wanted to sort of connect the public with, with um, where food comes from. Um, we're really proud of the milk that we produce um, and we've been drinking it for years and we thought actually we could, you know, it'd be nice to sell it to the public. Um, and we've never looked back really, it's, it's been fantastic, we've, it's been very popular. So we carve all year round, um, we are moving over to Shorthorn, so most of our cows now will be Shorthorn Cross because before I took on the farm we got in a dairy shorthorn bull um, so my first year on farm they were starting to carve then so we have a high number of shorthorn cross and then we bought in a few pedigree shorthorns so I think we're 75% shorthorn based now. So the milk vendor is something that we've wanted to do for quite some years like before I took it on but Grandad was at that stage investment was not what he wanted to do he just wanted to basically get rid, didn't want the cows anymore. He tinkers about on his tractors and that's about it, was what he wanted to do. Um, so when I had the chance to take on the farm, it was literally first thing that we did. So obviously I took it on the January, by the February we started knocking down the shed that we were making into a pasteurising room to make it work. So here we put fresh milk in every single day from that, so we pasteurise, Dad starts milking it like half four five we pasteurize then get it cooled and it's in the vendor for seven o'clock initially it was my idea wasn't it um, was, there was a post on a local facebook thing that's, that kind of started it someone said oh we went down to on holiday down in devon and they linked my name in it <coughs> and said um oh they had this vendor machine and it's brilliant and i looked at lisa so i don't think that work here you know i'm not sure we get the traffic and you kind of said well i don't know it's worth a look it's so, surprising how much traffic we get yeah. for a small country lane. So it's like, well, we can ask the question. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we put a little survey out um, on the local Facebook pages and um, it was surprising what response we got. It took a lot of time to get it, get it up and running. Waiting for, waiting for people. Well, people and materials, um, it took a long time, but um, oh, definitely, definitely glad. We should have done it years ago. Yeah. yeah. I think through... Um, Covid as well through the pandemic. There was a, quite a few people were asking, weren't they? Tell me why you're not here. Yeah. You couldn't come and tell it all. Like, you can't do it. And it's like we kind of have a bit of a responsibility to our local community as well. Um, so yeah, it all everything sort of added up. So we obviously take care of the, the milk side of things, but Ben's wife Emily has a cake making business, so she sells the cakes through here. Um, our parents are keen vegetable growers, so they grow vegetables and grow sell those. Now than they used to. Yeah, it's gone back to a, a small field scale business again, hasn't it? I oh, will just do a bit in the corner and now it's like, right, which half the field can I have? <laughs> so it's, it's good, isn't it? So it's provided a nice little little shop for, for the locals, and you know, we do get some people come. We're not too far from, from Hereford itself, so people coming out on a weekend for a milkshake. And it's really nice, isn't it? It's nice to actually be in direct contact with your with Well, your it's, um, it's on farm as well. We've got the cows there as you come down the drive and you say, well, that's where it comes from. That's what they're eating, so. That was a big pull as well. Um, it was a lot of children have no concept of where their food comes from. So they can come here, sit, have a milkshake from the farm and see the cows that produced it. When we did our interview and everything, 
part of our business plan was that we've, we've always wanted to try and start a vending machine, a vending machine, but thought, you know, we'll never, we'll never do it, we're far too busy. And then one day we just thought, do you know what? We really are working so hard at producing such an amazing produce here. Um, and it tastes amazing. But we just want everybody else to be able to taste it and be able to have it. So we thought, you know, lots of people are doing vending machines, but there's not that many in this area, and we think it would be highly supported. So we thought, you know, we took got got the tenancy, which was a big part of it, and for the sort of future planning, um, and then we, yeah, we thought also then we. We also found out that our friends that um, for many years, um, Tara and Simon, have got the tenancy for their farm, which is literally just a few like stone throw away. Um, and that they, when they took on, did their business plan, they wanted to put in a farm shop to sell their beef. So actually to tie it all together would have been, is the ideal place to do it. So we sort of got together and, and decided that you know, they were putting in their vending machine um, and we would love to be able to put in our milk vending machine um, in in their, their shop and, and that's what we've done. Yeah, it was mainly mine. Um, it was mainly Covid. It was Covid knowing um, local produce was doing quite well as a butchers was doing well. Um, we did think about, mentioned it two years before Covid, didn't do anything about it. And then it was uh, an article from Farmer's Guardian and saw somebody else and I was like, no, it's now or never. And then went for it and um, yeah, thought we'd be selling, the aim was to sell fresh local milk to local people. Um, where we now mainly sell 80% of milkshakes and um, a lot are local, but a lot travel a, a long way here, yeah. Yeah, stressful. I had a full-time job then, and then uh, with four kids at home as well, and the farm, and then also um, setting this up as well. Um, yeah, it was full on. Um, but then we opened on the first of January during in Wales as a lockdown, um, and I think that massively helped us. Um, highlighted social media, everything because I zoned in on it. Um, so I think it actually helped us. Um, but we were going into it thinking it wouldn't help us, so it's a bit of a uh, yeah. We were, rabbits and headlights really saying um, the machine just didn't stop um, there were queues here like half two in the morning um, that we were waiting up because the, the stop wasn't enough we were having because we had one machine at that time and a small bottle machine we were having to refill so often um, that it, I was up until half two and then my husband would get up at four and that was constant yeah it was just all and then the queues as well because it was locked down we were putting signs up or from here it'll take you an hour and they were still queuing and at one point it was an hour and a half they were queuing for and they were still queuing um yeah it was bonkers yeah um, because we've had like so we've got now two machine two machines we've got capacity 600 liters up there now where it was 200 liters to start with bottom machines we've got um two big bottle machines um, so the capacity is a lot more we've got updated card um, readers they're making it a lot more efficient bigger car park to but yeah we feel a lot less a lot quieter but on the litres we're really still very busy and then in another container to try and again to have the capacity we took all the food out and we've got one vending machine for all the cakes and eggs and donuts and then we've got a coffee machine and then an ice cream machine and then another vending machine um, or at the moment holding cow feet. So I started selling cow feet for the two pet cows. Yeah, so um, if nothing stays long here. Um, like the coffee machine's moved four times. So um, yeah, um, things change quite quickly. Yeah, um, to adapt really as things go on. We do doorstep deliveries as well. We have our milk contract processed away from the farm, comes back as bottles and we sell it again direct to the consumer to our town, Livam St. Anne's, Blackpool, Fowled Coast area really. Um, the other things that we do is we do raw milk on the farm, which is milk straight from the cows. So these cows literally get milked, gets put into our massive bulk tank and then gets put into a state-of-the-art vending machine that people can help themselves to and they can drink that milk and know where it came from exactly. Why we opened the farm shop in 2017, if I'm honest, we were chatting about the farm shop so much as a family. Uh, 
when the farm shop comes we'll do this when when the farm shop comes do we do that and then one day we had a conversation me and my mum and my dad and we were like right now is the time so we opened it but we started thinking in 2016 and that's when we started keeping our beef normally we sold it as a three or four month old calf got it off the farm and made more space because we always had a problem with space on this farm and uh, but then we kept them till about 24 to 30 months and then we have the privilege we have the honor of just selling our beef to Lim St. Anne's or anyone who comes and it's really nice that people go oh that's amazing and it is amazing because they're eating what's on the floor here they graze they eat it all um, and I think that is the little bit of difference that we have to our competitors to our supermarkets or anything like that. And then I came home in 2020 and decided to set up Winsbury Dairy so I pasteurise our milk and now we sell it in glass bottles in milk purgles to shops and restaurants and cafes and through milk vending machines. We milk cuppers four till about eight-ish in the morning um, and then yeah it, I take the milk from the line in the parlour, bring it in to be pasteurised, takes hour and a half, two hours and then it's literally bottled and sent out the same day. We've got a new milkshake trailer which is kind of our newest venture um that can kind of go around everywhere. definitely a bit more mobile get to some events and things that we couldn't get to before get the brand out there a bit more um and it's quite unique people seem to really like like the interaction with the screen and the fact it's all kind of help yourself so we started um we started with milk um and that went well and then my sister-in-law beth she started with milkshakes um which was really popular particularly with children um, and the vending machine's quite near primary school so um, we get we get a lot of kids and stuff so they, they loved it uh, and then about two and a half years ago we started doing our own cream as well um, which is uh, lovely very thick um, yeah very rich cream um, we're really lucky because we we got two um, we got a great taste award for both the milk and the cream so that was a big um, a, a big bonus last year really proud of that so um, we literally we talk in food meters not food miles so from milk in parlor to milk shed it's literally a few meters down the road um, and I think that's really important I think you can taste the freshness you know our milk is fresh every day in the vending machine so you know that it's never more than 24 hours old and you know that it's literally come from you can see the cows grazing in the fields um, and you can see the farm from the milk shed so it's so connected um, and you know whenever we're up there we're always happy to talk to people um, it's all about transparency um, we use social media a lot to sort of show behind the scenes um, we've done open days and we've done um, tours with schools and stuff so we really kind of want to connect the public with where it's from and I think you can taste that in the milk so we've got honey which is Heidi's honey this is quite a nice one uh, I think she was 12 when she first approached me, she's 13 now, um, she's like probably as the crow flies a mile away from here, uh, she approached me about selling her honey and that was probably my favourite one that we've got in there and then we've got Sam's hens eggs, um, I used to go to young farmers with Sam, Sam is two years older than me and um, based on the other side of your toxita so real local there, then we've got Just Chris which is from the Frogger family um, Dad went to school with them sort of thing so it's really local people and um, what else uh, sausage rolls and pork pies from a local butcher in Abbots Bromley who dad went to school with and is good friends with and then cheese from Staffordshire Cheese Sportive they wanted to do it they were just as keen as me dad was like I'm not doing anything with it I was just milk the cows but now dad's like the most paranoid one of the three of us about doing everything <laughs> I want to go back. I want to do more of them, but it's finding the right locations for me. For here, um, we want to get an ice cream vendor in maybe some more outdoor space stuff to get people and a few like animals, different animals to what we've got for people to come meet and greet. So there's changes that need there and it'll be a lot of work. <laughs> but it's what we want to do long term. We want to get back that connection with the customer. We are grateful for the support from the Gloucestershire County Council um, and our farm consultant, Andy Dodd, because if we didn't have their 
full support then we just wouldn't be where we are now really proud to be dairy farmers absolutely really glad we've done it yeah. really glad we've done it um and you know nothing nothing's gonna stop us and get in our way to do to make this work definitely the novelty of having milk is, is new to us so we wanted to pass that on because um people think it's the same it's not the same milk it doesn't taste the same um so no we wanted to provide the locals with fresh milk um it's kind of a, a gone bigger than that but um i do think people like because um it's on the farm they've got their well the two pet cows and we've got then the cows on this side so on this side of the platform that they get to see the cows as well and it, they are interested um people are more interested than, than we think um about where where it comes from it is easy to to get ahead of yourself i want to go and do deliveries and um supply do, do that or do more vending machines but um, no, at the moment it's better what we've got to make it a bit more of a location and then, then look at it again in the future, yeah. 100% I'm proud to be a dairy farmer. Um, it's something I, I'm a little bit obsessed with, to be honest. I love my cows and everything about them and there's nothing better looking behind. Cows just chilling, so they've got a belly full of grass, they're chewing away on the cud, uh, they produce high quality milk for our raw milk or for our cream, for anything that we do. Um, and just to see that is just amazing and I wouldn't change it for the world. And I just love the fact that we're like a farming family business and we kind of all bounce off each other. Sometimes it's hard living and working together, but like, yeah, no, in general I love it. And it's, I, 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 yeah, I love my job. And it sounds weird saying it's a job because it doesn't feel like work it kind of feels like it's just life which I feel like that's kind of what I wanted always so yeah and it's such a nice industry like there's a really good community like everyone helps each other we're all we've all got the same mission um, even people who do the same things like we've got neighbors who are processing milk but like the amount of help that I've got from them and the relationship that we have with them it's it's really really nice it's yeah and just for people to kind of know about us and what we do and kind of that we are maintaining high animal welfare and we're farming sustainably with the future in mind and kind of our practices. It's really nice to kind of showcase that and have a platform for that. So yeah, no, I'm really proud It's to be in the industry. It's nice. Future plans, yeah, we've got a few irons in the fire. Um, Hopefully we'd like to do butter quite soon. That's been something that we've talked about for years, um, but we've never quite got round to it. Um, life's got in the way a bit. Um, but we'll, yeah, certainly would like to do something with that. We've got lots of plans for the shed. We've got lots of plans um, to do other bits and bobs. So yeah, watch this space. Yeah, we're incredibly proud to produce milk we're incredibly proud to be dairy farmers and farmers in general it's a, um it's an industry that you know so often gets overlooked um but it's it's such a uh, it's an amazing industry and I, I feel like we don't shout about it enough and we really should do because it's just amazing some of the produce um around the country you know in our county is just incredible and it's 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 a, well it's award-winning um, and we should really shout about it because it's, it's amazing and we're certainly proud to produce uh, milk and cream and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, proud to be farmers. <laughs> oh wow, um, so if I were to sit down with someone, anyone in the world, who would I sit down with? So there's probably like two people which no one will know. No, there's the one person that will, no one will know that's just kind of unique to me. There's someone that I followed on social media probably uh, for a long time, which is really weird that you won't get. It's a guy called Max Tuning. So he's a guy, he's a YouTuber. I've watched him for the last six or seven years and I do a lot of YouTube as well. Um, if, if you don't know, go follow me, Tom Pemter Farm Life, cheeky plug in there. Um, yeah, and then I do a lot and then I learn a lot from him. He has nothing to do with farming, he has nothing to do with anything I do, but I've learned so much from watching other people and away from the farming industry. I'd love to just have a chat and just to like kind of, I don't know, enjoy a glass of milk or a margarita. I think Amy um, from Dairy Daughter, Okay, yeah, her, um, yeah, I follow her for years on Instagram and um, yeah, to sit down with her and yeah, learn a lot probably. Um, yeah, especially because the 
what she's doing is amazing, social media as well, and um, enjoyed watching her before doing the medley machines. Yeah, so now, yeah, I think I'd enjoy chat with her, yeah. Oh, what a great question. I don't know whether it's just because it's the Jubilee coming up, but the one coming to my brain is the Queen. I just love her. Really the Queen. I was going to say the Queen because it's a Platinum Jubilee year. And she's always, that her, you know, she's a big fan of uh, farming, isn't she? And, uh, and local produce, so possibly the Queen. Uh, I recommend everyone to go follow local farming. Britain, right now, what are you doing? It's best content of farming Britain after Tom Pemps Farmer. Cheers.